want to play a little game with you, my friend. <laughs> it is called Blow It Up or Stay the Course. Should these teams sell at the deadline or keep their core pieces? And we're going to go through a few teams. I got to start with Phoenix because this is a team that was in the Western Conference Finals just two years ago. They dropped down to a second round exit last year. This year, stack their number nine in the West, one game under 500. And look, they're one of the oldest teams in the NBA. Chris Paul, 37, not playing to his usual standards. There's the whole DeAndre Ayton quagmire. They've got Jay Crowder as an asset. He hasn't played all season because he wants that chunky contract the Suns didn't want to give him. And in the middle of it all, you know who's there, Devin Booker, 26 years old, looking at a team that is 8-14 and 14 when he doesn't play. So, Stack, what should Phoenix do? They definitely need to blow it up, Rachel. It, it ain't no secret. Um, you know, they, you know, all the stuff that then went on with the owner. You know, that that has put a cloud over their team. They need to kind of start from scratch. Uh, CP has basically, you know, got them to the finals, but everything has been kind of downhill since then. You know, a lot's been going on with that team with Aiden. It's just so much. You know, I think I think they need to blow it up. I think uh, they're gonna have to make a decision who they can keep. But in order for them to get back to where they were, Rachel, they definitely gonna have to break it up. That feels extreme. Blow it up. I mean, they've still got a decent core. What about just adding someone? What about just, like, tinkering and adding someone big? Yeah, I just don't think there's nobody out there. All, all, of, all the key players are big guys that was that can, you know, they call the players that's one player away. All those guys mm-hmm. are locked into contracts. Most of those guys are locked into contracts so, and are happy where they're at. So, um, right. you know what I mean? I just, I just don't see that, that working. Their core is good, right? Their, their core is pretty decent. You know, but I just think with the, the star problems is where, is, is where they need to have make some uh, some uh, changes. Look, Chris Paul clearly, I mean, he's 37. He can't be what he was five years ago, maybe even two years ago. Mm-hmm. I still want him for playoff experience on this team in key moments. And I, I just, we'll talk about OG Ananobi in a few minutes because we got to have a whole Toronto discussion as well. I, I think he could make a big difference there. I feel like if they're willing, they've got a new owner, if they're willing to spend, spend some money, spend some draft picks, they could tweak enough to really make a run, but they'd have to – it's like a half blow-up. I'm with you. I'm like mm-hmm. a half blow-up. Mm-hmm. And I, I do think Aiton is not a lock to stay there. Um, I'm not saying he's available right now, but I, I do think that, you know, Booker is a non-starter. I don't know if Aiton's a non-starter. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Let's talk about Portland. Start of the season 9-3. and three. Good good start, but it's gone way downhill. Blazers sitting at number 12, three games under 500. And Stack, this is a team that did not think they would be here. They spent a lot of money this summer. They signed Damian Lillard to that extension that will make him one of the most well-paid players in NBA history. They brought in Jeremy Grant. They have Josh Hart. They have Anthony Simons, Shaden Sharp. Those are their two young pieces. We know what a good coach Chauncey Billups is. So it's clearly not enough with all those pieces. And when it's a rough season in Portland, you know the question it always comes back to is there a point the Blazers need to trade Dame and his salary and start from scratch? What do you think? Uh, I just think the way the way they got their money set up, Rach, it ain't just Dame. They got a lot of money tied up in a lot of guys over there that can be key trade pieces, you know. And, and they got some guys over there, Rachel, that can go to other teams and be that one mm-hmm. guy, you know. So uh, Portland has – I think Portland out of any team – has a lot of pieces to make big trades and to make a better team for Dame and Chauncey, but they just haven't done it. Over the years, they, they brought certain guys in that they thought was going to make uh, make a change for this team, and they just haven't done it. And uh, I think just losing CJ was a, was a, was a big loss for them. CJ's my guy. Uh, what, the the, the um, combination of him and Dame was just special to see every night, but they just they couldn't get it done either. So they're going to have to uh, find a way to get Dame another big-name player in there, Rachel, for some help because he's been doing this for so long. I don't think Dame is going to leave. I don't think they want Dame to leave. I think it's going to have to be all those other pieces and put that money together. Yeah, that's a great point because they're kind of in this catch-22, right? Dame can't really go to them and publicly ask for a trade after all he has said and done and genuinely feels about his loyalty to the city. They can't trade him away as a franchise. They can't do that to the fans and just be like, yeah, we're getting rid of Dame Lillard. I mean, that's that's a tough position, too, without him saying he wants to go. They had an interesting situation with Jeremy Grant, Stack, because Dame wanted him. They were tight from the Olympic team. He asked Portland to go out and get Jeremy. They did. Um, But he's got an expiring contract. So they did offer to extend him. Jeremy Grant reportedly rejected the extension. It could just be because he can get a lot more money in the summer, or it could be because he is going to look around in the summer if you're Portland, do you take that risk and keep him on? Or is that one of the pieces that when you say, hey, they got to make big changes around Dame, that you say, great, if you're not 
If we might lose you for nothing this summer, we got to get rid of you. Well, that name is different, Rach. That's one of those guys I keep. Uh, the energy he brings and the way he's been playing mm -hmm. the last couple of years, I think he could be one of those guys that really can help any team. He's one of those guys that's that one player away guy. I don't, I don't think right. he's the, I don't think he's the guy that needs to leave, Rich. I think it could be other guys on that team. And Dame, we got him for a reason because you know a lot of guys yeah. like like his energy and his effort, and he brings it every night. Yeah, no, he's he's a player's player. There's no question about it. I want to go over the East because we got Chicago sitting at number ten. There's no timetable for when Lonzo Ball is going to come back. Zach Levine, we know, is locked up for 40-plus mil per year until 2027. But DeRozan's going to enter free agency, not after this season, but the next one. And Vucevic is a free agent after this season. I, I got to say, like, I know the big swing they took with those three guys as their core, but their ceiling is not a championship ceiling. It is clearly lower. And mm -hmm. you've got Alex Caruso, who everyone in the league seems to want. What would you do if you're that front office deck? Well, they got they got a uh, lot of money tied up in the big man. So you know, once once he becomes a free agent, they can they can get two big pieces. Hopefully, I'll, I'll put a little package together to get two guys in that can come in and get a banger probably, and another and another big man that can score to kind of to have two guys equal him. But um, that team is just not put together to be a championship team, like you said, right? When you look at it, yeah, they got they got they got a lot of guys that. We like as, as as basketball fans and watching the game, but just the combination of Lonzo being hurt, uh, DeRozan, you know, having his nights, Zach Levine being in and out, you know, uh, Caruso being fan favorite, and he's not even the star of the team. It's like it's a lot of things that's going on over there that that, that don't equal winning, and uh, that's why you see that the things going on the way they are. I mean, if you're a Laker fan watching Alex Caruso. And also hearing that the front office could get, I mean, there are reports out there. The Bulls are asking for as much as two first round picks for him. And the Lakers could have still had that. That's painful enough. But there's talk about the Lakers wanting Vucevic. What do you think of that? Would you like to see him there? I mean, I, I like that. I mean, the combination of him and Anthony Davis, that's going to take a lot of pressure mm -hmm. off Anthony Davis, I tell you that, uh, when he comes back. Um, um, I like it, right? I think that would be a good move for them. Anything going, anything for them a, a, a be a help to try to change things there because, you know, they still have time. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I just certainly think with Vucevic being expiring, you got to just cut bait at this point with mm -hmm. this idea that those three are going to get it done for you, but we'll see what the Bulls want to do. Let's talk about Toronto, too. We mentioned OG Ananobi earlier. Raptors 12 in the East. Uh, they got Scotty Barnes, who's 21 years old. He's setting a lot of their future timeline Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent Jr., they could walk for nothing this summer. They've got player options, so they're ripe for a trade if the Raptors want to go that blow-it-up direction. And again, OG and Anobi, he is supposedly the hottest guy on the market, Stack, according to you know front office sources and all that stuff. He is the guy that everyone says, that's your one piece away. So he is going to command insane price on the trade market if the Raptors go that direction. So should the Raptors go that direction? Should they just kind of blow it up right now? I mean, me personally, I'm I'm not I wouldn't agree with OG. Uh, I can't say his last name. Oh, I can't. I don't agree you with OG, OG being that. What? Yeah, OG. I I can't agree with that. I don't think he's that 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 guy to me. Um, yeah, he's a young talent. He plays hard, but he has a lot of holes in his game to me. He's not that efficient offensively. He makes a lot of uh, aggressive uh, hustle plays, but uh, just a guy you can just give the ball to and go get you thirty. He's not that guy. So. Um, I like him, but I just think it's so much things, it's so much stuff that's wrong with that team as far as the personnel. Um, Rach, um, they don't. I don't think it's just built. It's built to 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 compete like they've been in the past. You know, just having that the the right size three guard. You know, sometimes in the, they they're one, two, and three. They have in the, in the game sometimes like they're they're real small. You know, what I'm saying they, yeah. they 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 they're not the size of, of of a team that we're looking at that's going to be in the playoffs, but. Um, a lot of things need to change. I, I like the coach. I think the coach is solid. Um, yeah. And I think Van Vliet's time in Toronto may be up because, um, you know, he's had a success there. And it happens to everybody. It's not that he's not playing well or, or deserves to be yeah. there. But, you know what I'm saying, everybody runs, runs their course sometimes in places. Well, we saw the Raptors when it was Kyle Lowry. Mm -hmm. Everyone thought they would deal Kyle Lowry because his contract was going to be up that summer. And the Raptors just said, out of respect for him, they didn't feel like they found a good enough deal. So they kept him. And then, of course, they did lose him. They're kind of in the same situation with Fred Van Vliet. I mean, I know he's got a player option, but still, they're basically looking at him, possibly losing him for nothing this summer. I got to think 
that they will make a different decision this time. I mean, Fred Van Vliet, while he's done great things for that franchise, does not have the Kyle Lowry status in Toronto in terms of that respect factor. And I don't know, the Clippers, I think, are huge contenders to get him because the idea of finally giving them a real starting point guard and pairing him with Kawhi Leonard again is very appealing in L.A. So I can see that trade happening. And we'll see with OG and Anobi. I know Dallas is, you know, interested in what happens there. I th- there's a couple. There's a couple teams that think if they put him next to their superstar. Dallas better not do that to Luca, Rach. Don't do that to Luca. <laughs> don't do that to Luca, <laughs> Dallas. Come on, no, Dallas. No, on that. Nah, don't do that. <laughs> well, we will see. It's going to be an interesting week, Stack, and we'll be back next week, just a couple days before the deadline. So we will talk more about this.